my special formula for telling when you have too many books. You ready? Come closer. There's no such thing as too many books. And I know this because I recently got some more of them. Hi guys, it's Leanne and welcome to another book haul. That's right, it is April. It is month four of my book buying ban. And yet somehow books have mysteriously continued to appear in my house. Some of them were pre-orders from before the book buying ban was a thing. Some of them have come from friends. Some of them were late birthday gifts because the pepperoni sucks. And some of them were kindly gifted by publishers because they knew that I couldn't actually go six months without any new books or I would have imploded. I mean the book buying ban is strictly there to ensure that I do not become bankrupt. It is in no way there to stop books from coming into my house. Consider this to be Leanne's home for wayward books. All books welcome but some will eventually find their door and sod off again. I have a truly epic spread of genres in this video so let's just crack on with a beautiful book. I think it's always nice to start with just a pretty cover. Something you just want to look at all day and then put off reading for six years. Because that's normal, right? That We all do that. Yes? Yes? Yes. Hm. This is Beauty and the Beast. You're, you're gonna make me try and say it, aren't you? Okay. <clears throat> this is Beauty and the Beast by Gabrielle Suzanne Bardot de Villeneuve, which is the most Scottish pronunciation of that name that you will ever hear on the internet. This is of course one of the beautiful Mina Lima editions of these classic fairy tales which they've been bringing out over the last couple of years. This beautiful edition was sent to me by one of my lovely subscribers Najat. She's literally the nicest person in the world. As with all of the Mina Lima editions there is not a single page in this book that doesn't have some kind of illustration on it. And although it's usually difficult to show you all of these editions have interactive components in this one. This one here has some mirrored boxes that you can pop open. I particularly enjoy that this edition has a book within a book. I am really looking forward to dipping into the original story of this one which I am sure will be dark and delicious. Next up I have a pre-order that I am so very excited about. This is Skyward In by Aaliyah Whiteley and it is a sci-fi with a twist. I've really been loving that in the last couple of years the sci-fi genre has been pushing out more character based stories along the lines of like Becky Chambers. And Skyward In is just that. This follows Jem and Isla and they are two veterans from either side of a war. They now own an inn on a planet that Earth has conquered that has given itself up to Earth's rule and they're just trying to keep their heads down and make ends meet in this new world. Then a mysterious visitor known only to Isla turns up and threatens that fragile peace. The tagline at the end of this one says, did humanity really win the war? And I'm like, I don't know, did they? Also, Aaliyah Whiteley usually writes speculative fiction, so this one might have like a kind of creepy weird curve somewhere in it, and I'm very there for that. Next up, I have the cutest contemporary in the world. It was a gift from lovely wife Helen for my birthday 2.0, my reboot of my really weird second lockdown birthday and it is Fat Chance Charlie Vega. Charlie is having a bit of a hard time. She is trying her very best to have a good relationship with her plus size body which she thinks there is in fact nothing wrong with except her mum is desperate for her to diet. She keeps leaving hints around the place like diet shakes on her desk and she just wants to escape from it all. The only person in the world that Charlie thinks really sees her and doesn't want to change her is her best friend Amelia who could not be more different. She's slim, she's athletic, she's into sports and then one day a boy walks into the picture and asks Charlie out. She thinks maybe the tide for her is turning, maybe people are starting to appreciate her for the body that she's in and the person that she is but then she discovers that this boy asked Amelia out for and the fallout from that literally changes Charlie's life. This is possibly my favourite contemporary cover 
ever. Next up I have a couple of books sent to me for review from the lovely people at Book Break. The first one is already out, it came out in February and the real cover looks like this. It is Kololo Hill by Nima Shah and it is about the Ugandan expulsion of Asians in 1972. It follows Ashra and Pran who have been desperately trying to keep their small family business afloat and then they like all other Ugandan Asians are given 90 days to take their entire life and leave the country. They have absolutely no idea where they are going or what money and just have to desperately hope that Britain will take them in along with all of the other refugees but there is a secret hanging over their family to do with the expulsion which when it finally comes out is set off like a bomb. Not only does that bomb shatter their image of who they were in the past but it also questions whether they can stay together as a family in the future. Next up I have Blackwater Sister by Zen Cho. I am going to read you the synopsis of this one because as soon as I read it I was like please give me that book. I will give you an organ for that book. Can I have that book? Laid to rest but out for revenge. There's never a good time to start hearing a voice in your head, especially a bossy one. Wait, do I need to start worrying about CCTV cameras in my head again? Broke, jobless and having just graduated, Jessamine is reluctantly leaving her life in America to return home to Malaysia, a place she hasn't even seen since childhood. Jess soon learns that the voice in her head belongs to Ama, her late grandmother. Yeah! Ama worshipped a local Malaysian deity, the Blackwater Sister, but when a business tycoon offended the goddess, Ama swore revenge. Now she's decided that her granddaughter can help her with her mission, whether she wants to or not. <laughs> Drawn into a world of ghosts, gods and her family's shenanigans, Jess soon realises that getting a job will be the least of her worries. This comes out in June so really I feel like I should leave it a little bit to read it but I don't want to, I want to read it now. Next up I have got a slightly random book for me but it is a fairy tale retelling. Most people are obsessed with retellings of Beauty and the Beast and don't get me wrong, I love Beauty and the Beast. However, there's a tiny secret little part of me that is obsessed with Cinderella. I'm still waiting for something from the fairy godmother's point of view and I might just have to write it myself. In the meantime, we have got The Shadow in the Glass by JJA Harwood. This one is about Ella and at the start it says, once upon a time Ella wished for something better than life is just a lowly maid. But she has now been forced into doing just that and for her horrible stepfather who has always hated her and who has always treated her badly. She sees absolutely no way to escape this fate and then one night a fairy godmother turns up on the stroke of midnight and offers her seven wishes but each of those wishes comes with a price. She can have literally anything she wants but she has to decide whether paying that price is worth it. And when you have some people who've been not so nice to you in your life the question really becomes what exactly is it that you are wishing for? I wish to know! <laughs> I crack me up. <laughs> Hold on, this stack is getting very precarious, this is not going to work for me. <laughs> Next up I have a book that when it landed on my doorstep, it set my little heart all a flutter. You guys know that one of my favourite books in the world is The Screaming Staircase, Lockwood & Co. Really the whole series that I love it, love it to pieces. I recommend it to everybody all the time, won't shut up about it, don't feel bad about it. And the author, Jonathan Stroud, does have another series which is a middle grade series called The Bartimus Series which I will eventually get to but what I really wanted was another YA series that gave me the same feeling as Lockwood but just set in a different world. And Jonathan Stroud heard me and so he wrote this book for me. I mean he didn't, he literally doesn't know who I am but I don't care because I love him and I'm gonna love this book. I had better love this book. The title of this is The Outlaws Scarlet and Brown being an account of their daring exploits and audacious crimes. It's a fantasy western guys, it's like the book of my dreams. Scarlet McCain is a shoot first, ask questions later kind of outlaw. She survives on bank heists, her wits, and never looking back. That is until she meets Albert Brown. Albert, that is that is a choice of a name. That is until she meets Albert Brown, a boy with a dark past and an even darker talent, thrown together in a lawless future Britain populated by strange and savage beasts, the two must escape across the wilderness with deadly enemies 
close behind. I'm expecting a lot from you, book. I mean, not that anything bad's gonna happen to you, but my heart will be broken. Next up, I have another contemporary. This one is a contemporary romance, and I must admit, the cover is kind of a contender. It's kind of coming for Charlie Vega. This is I Think I Love You by Oriane de Sombre, and I... <laughs> so sweet, it's so sweet. This is about Emma, who is a complete romantic. She loves cats, she loves movies, she loves fall in love at first sight things, and she is writing the rom-com of her dreams for an upcoming film festival. Enter Sophia. She knows exactly who she is. She is into protests, she is into pragmatism, and she is absolutely not into boys in any way. She's an out and proud lesbian and she is not afraid to tell you that. Girl after my own heart. Sophia and Emma have to work on this film together and Sophia doesn't have any room in her pragmatism for Emma's like bright eyed romance. She wants a film with a message. It looks like the movie is going to be doomed from the start but then as the cameras start rolling they start capturing a love affair. It's just not the one with the characters in it. The one with Emma and Sophia in it bickering about the characters. Give it to me! Speaking of sapphic things and the booktubers who love them, I have a fantasy debut that I think I may have waited for my entire life. This is The Unbroken by C.L. Clark, and I'm gonna read you the blurb and then you're gonna go buy the book, okay? Because I need the next book in this series and I need it like now. Terrain is a soldier. Stolen as a child and raised to kill and die for the Empire, she owes loyalty only to her fellow conscripts. But now she has been sent back to her homeland to stop a rebellion. And the ties of blood may be stronger than she thought. Luca needs a turncoat. Someone who can sway the rebels towards peace while Luca focuses on what really matters winning back her throne. Through assassinations and massacres in bedrooms and war rooms, Terrain and Luca will haggle over the price of a nation. But some things aren't for sale. Just lock me in a room with silence and nobody else and let me finish this book. Next up I have two books that just got here today from my lovely lovely friend Sarah. You can follow her on bookstagram here. She's the nicest horrible person in the world and I love her dearly. She got for me her favourite read so far this year which is high praise, high enough praise that I would have eventually got this myself after the book buying ban. This is All the Young Men by Ruth Coker Burks and it is both a memoir and a call to arms. In 1986 Ruth went to a hospital to visit a friend and as she was leaving she walked past a room wherein she heard a young man lying calling for his mother as he was dying. He was in a complete quarantine zone, he was terrified but the nurses would not go near him and so Ruth entered the quarantine zone, she walked into the room and she held his hand as he lay dying. After that incident, word started to spread that Ruth was the only person willing to go into these rooms with these men who were dying, who was the only person who was not worried that AIDS was contagious and that started her relationship with the LGBTQIA plus community. She goes from patient to patient knowing that she is making friends with men who are going to die and who are going to leave her but who she desperately does not want to be alone in their last moments and she creates a community. She takes the ashes of these unclaimed men and she buries them in her own family cemetery and she campaigns for better rights and better health care. Teaches sex education and eventually she gets all the way to the White House consulting on the AIDS crisis. This is going to completely break my heart but I am so desperate to read it. But Sarah knew that I would need a pick me up and she's my girl and she's got me covered and so she also sent me volume one of Safe Sex. This is set in a dystopian America where in sex and pleasure is completely banned and we follow a cast of queer characters working in an underground bar called The Dirty Mind while they try and serve their customers an experience. They try to cram everything that they need into the time that they have with them and they try to do it all without being caught. But then an idea springs to mind and the back says that they use their unique talents of bondage to infiltrate the government and try to bring it to its knees once and for all. Next up I have another contemporary because apparently I can't get enough of really cute contemporaries right now. This is Perfect on Paper by Sophie Gonzalez and it has the most 
hilarious concept. Darcy Phillips is behind the notorious Locker 89, a locker in this school where students can post letters through and ask for relationship advice. This is clearly a completely anonymous service and if anybody ever found out that it was Darcy, she would be absolutely shunned. The amount of stuff that she knows about other people's relationships at this point could bring down the entire school. But then a new kid joins and he accidentally stumbles on Alex's identity and so she is forced to strike a bargain with him. He will not tell anybody who she is and she will help him get back with his really, really annoying ex. I am excited. Next up for my birthday from the lovely Ashley from A Frolic Through Fiction, I have got Master of Sorrows by Justin Call. The only thing that I know about this is that Ashley really really loved it like loved it so much that she has now got the second book and despite the fact that it is a veritable brick she is determined she's going to read it like right now she did a vlog where she talked about loving it i will link you to her channel down below you can go watch it but for now you and i are gonna find out what it's about together we're gonna read the synopsis the academy of shanbalu has stood against magic for centuries Hidden from the world, acting from the shadows, it trains its students to detect and retrieve magic artifacts which it jealously guards from the misuse of others. Because magic is dangerous, something that heals can also harm, and a power that aids one person may destroy another. Ooh. Of the academy's many students, only the most skills become avatars, warrior thieves capable of infiltrating the most heavily guarded vaults and only the most determined are trusted to resist the lure of magic. More than anything, Anev de Bruth wants to become one of them. I think me and this book are going to get along just fine. And I think Lovely Wife Helen is probably also going to read it because she loves anything in fantasy which involves like training, especially training, you know, thieves and murdery people. What can I say? The love of murdery things runs in my family. Speaking of murdery things, from my lovely, lovely friend Zoe for my birthday, I received this one. This is the next in the illustrated A Song of Ice and Fire books by George R. R. Martin. It is an absolute brick. But I'm very, very excited because I would love to do a reread of this series, maybe towards the end of the year. It's been a while since I made my way past book one, which I've read a multitude of times. And the fun thing about these illustrated editions is that every single edition has a different artist which I didn't actually realise when I received the second one for my birthday. The art in this one is very very different, it's really sketchy, it kind of has almost like 80s comic vibes and I really really like it. So thank you very much Zoe, I am excited to add this to my collection. I've been talking for so long that it's now dark in here. Next up I have a book that I received from my wish list. Now it did come with a note but it specifically says from a viewer so I don't think that the person who gifted it wants me to say their name so you know who you are and thank you so very much for sending it through especially because I was so so excited for this book when I put it on my wish list this is the secret lives of church ladies just look at that cover for a minute just oh. now you guys know that I do not do short stories very often because I hate starting things. That goes for short stories, novels, anything. I hate the beginning of things because you're just getting to know everybody and you can't just sink into them and be out of your own brain. You have to take in all the facts. And short stories often feel like just when you get comfortable with characters, they're gone again. But I'm so excited for this collection because so many people that I know have read it and have absolutely loved it. There are nine stories in here which span four different generations of characters and sort of hone in on on one really extreme point in their lives. I am so, so desperate for representation in fiction, in all fiction, in all of the genres that I read, for people who are over the age of 30. And not as like spinster grannies, but as active characters with agency. I just, I am dying for it. And this one promises lots of that. It is also, I think, completely about black women specifically. And so it is touted as quite a feminist collection. And yes, Give me it. Next up, I've got one that was sent through from my lovely friend, Rebecca. I will leave her channel name down here. You can go and follow her. She recently did a vlog where she read like me for a little while, which 
Ah, oh, it was so sweet. She's just so nice. She was doing a random act of kindness day and she sent me through two books. She also sent me Vicious by V.E. Schwab, but I don't know what I've done with it. It's in a pile somewhere in the chaos of the office rearranging. So I will find it eventually. But the other one that I have is Goldilocks. So Goldilocks is another one of those sci-fi books that looks specifically at characters. This follows the first all-female space mission to the Goldilocks zone, a new place for humanity can go where conditions are perfect for them to live. This mission could literally be the last hope for humanity's survival and so Valerie who is heading up has a lot of pressure on her shoulders. Accompanying Valerie on this trip is Naomi who is her surrogate daughter. She is a botanist. She's been waiting her entire life for her chance to do this and the two of them are determined that nothing is going to go wrong. But then when things start going mysteriously awry with the ship the two women are forced to wonder if somebody aboard might just be sabotaging their efforts. Next up I have got a middle grade and it was sent through to me from the lovely Kimberly from Raven Claw Library Books that is very difficult to say with a Scottish accent just saying. And it's a book was one of my favourite things in the world in it and that is a parrot. Secret thing about me, I'm obsessed with parrots and parrots and birds of all varieties and I would love to have many of them in my house. But as I do not actually have room for, you know, flight in my house, I don't think it would be very fair and so I can only stare at them from afar and in books. So if you have any recommendations for books with parrots in them, uh, I'm here for it. So in the meantime, I'm going to be reading The House of 100 Clocks by A.M. Howell. Everything in this title is just trying to trip me up. This is technically historical middle grade fiction. It's set in 1905 and I think it might have a sort of magical realism twist in it. So it says, Helena and her parrot orbit <laughs> are swept off to Cambridge when her father is appointed clockwinder to one of the wealthiest men in England. There is only one rule. The clocks must never stop. Soon Helena discovers the house of 100 clocks holds many mysteries. A ghostly figure, strange notes and stolen winding keys. Can she work out the house's secrets before time runs out? I don't know, can she? I need to know now, so I'm going to have to read it. Look at that, isn't it? Just the most precious and perfect and I really want a macaw. Next up, I have a book sent from one of my lovely subscribers, Jo. Thank you so much for sending this one through to me. She left a note saying that this was one of her favourite books from one of her favourite authors. And in fact, it is one of my new favourite authors. This is Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell. I fell in love with the family upstairs not that long ago. And now I literally have all of Lisa Jewell's backlist and I'm not sorry about it. It is honestly one of my favourite thrillers of all time. And so I'm hoping that this one is just as good but I don't know anything about it so let's learn together again. You don't see her but she sees you. Midnight in an area of urban wasteland where cats hunt and foxes shriek a girl is watching. <laughs> when Sapphire Maddox was 10 something terrible happened and she's carried the pain of it ever since. The man she thought was going to heal her didn't and now she hides learning his secrets invisible in the shadows. Owen Pick is invisible too. He's never had a girlfriend, he's never had a friend. Nobody sees him, nobody cares. But when Sapphire goes missing from opposite his house on Valentine's night, suddenly the world seems to be watching Owen, accusing him, holding him responsible for Sapphire's disappearance. I don't know guys, I don't know if I can handle the suspense long enough to not read this this month. And then finally, I have a last gift from a lovely subscriber again. This one just says from a YouTube subscriber and so I don't think they want me to read out the name that was on the gift note. So again, if this was you, thank you very, very much. This one is one of their favorite books and I don't know guys, like from the synopsis, it could become one of my favorite books. This is Show Us Who You Are by Elle McNichol. It says, when Cora meets Adrian, she is looking for a new best friend. She doesn't want to explain that she's different but Adrian surprises her and soon she's drawn into a whirlwind of fun adventure and true friendship and into the mysterious world of the Pomegranate Institute. Cora becomes captivated by Pomegranate's hologram technology that can bring people back to life 
But there are secrets lurking beneath the surface that threaten everything she knows to be true. Can Cora fight to make her voice heard and not lose sight of herself? Doesn't it also have a stunning cover? And that's it guys, those are all of my very many books. There were very, very many books here. I'm not gonna count them, I, I don't wanna know. But I do have to now put them all away, which, <laughs> yay me. So as always, please let me know, have you read any of the books that I've hauled here today? Are you as excited for any of them as I am? Conversely, have you read some of them and you don't like them at all and you want to tell me your opinion? You can also do that. I love opinions. Leave them in the comments below. And again, as all of us booktubers say who give recommendations every day, if you have any recommendations for me, please also leave them in the comments below, especially if they're based on any of these books because I have a long list and it is a list that I am allowed to buy when my book buying ban is finished in like many months time and I'ma buy everything on that list. Everything? All the things. If you liked this video please give it a quick thumbs up below to shove it into the sidebar so that other people can also like it. And if you are new here or coming back then why not subscribe and then my videos will pop into your feed and you will be able to get all of my recommendations immediately. And I will speak to all of you very soon. Bye! Am I ever gonna stop playing with this desk? Probably not. No, bring the books back, bring the books back. My books, my books, my books, my books. The desk can't have them. Ooh.